right. We've got the new Halo AI M2 hat kit for Raspberry Pi 5. It's only for the Pi 5 because you need the PCIe slot. But if you want to run TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite at like as good or better than desktop speeds, this AI accelerator uh, that uses the PCIe port doesn't require USB. Um, so you have to worry about the USB slowing stuff down. Um, and there's already like pre-compiled versions of all the uh, AI and machine learning tools that you'll want that take advantage of the accelerator. So you can have like a little machine that can do edge and video, you know, edge uh, machine learning, video and audio recognition without using the cloud. Okay, next up. Next up, um, this is kind of exciting. Uh, hopefully this is the beginning of a new big thing. So we've got the TRS Trinky in the shop, which is used for um, assistive tech. And one of the things I wanted to do is have an enclosure for it so that people who used it didn't have to worry about accidentally like getting it dusty or dirty or spilling something on it. Um, even though it's not an IP67 case, something to protect it. So Noah and Pedro did a 3D printing project where they 3D printed a case, but a lot of people don't have a 3D printer and maybe they don't want to like separately order a 3D printed case. So um, I used a, a quick turn like SLA printing service. They're not, so this is made with like a resin process. Uh, so it doesn't have, um, it has a good tolerance to make a snap fit case for the TRS Trinky. So um, the uh, case comes in two pieces. Um, there's no screws required. You just snap it right onto your uh, TRS Trinky. And then there's a little, um, button wedge like the little u is the the reset button there's also a slot for the uh stem qt port and then of course on the end you have the um if you go back one there's the trs jack you can plug in to uh, make your custom buttons and switches and if this works out we will make lots more cases uh, if you have requests for oh i really want a case that does this and this um we, you know we've made cases for products like the circuit playground and for the raspberry pi but injection molding is a very expensive and long taking process with a lot of revisions. What I like about this is that, you know, we can order a couple hundred at a time. If people like them, we can tweak them. We can improve on them. Uh, they only come in, you know, kind of an off-white color or maybe black. But for a lot of people, that's that's plenty fine. One thing I do like is it's a translucent white, so the NeoPixel glows through. Okay, next up. Um, next up is uh, some breakout boards from us. So... We wanted to have stuff that plugs directly into a USB-C port. We wanted to first find a really good USB-C plug, something that has all the pins that we need and is like edge mounted. So you can you know plug a device straight in to a USB-C port, um, but doesn't require an external case to keep it mechanically stable. So this is a nice plug because it has a little bit of like a through hole tab, but still has plenty of pins and is fairly easy to solder, not too expensive. And it has the power and data pins plus the CC1 pin. Um, a lot of people ask, hey, wait, don't you need the CC2 pin? No, not on the plug. The plug side actually only uses one side of the USB-C connection. That's normal. And then on the USB jack side, it detects which CC pin is connected and that way it knows which direction it's plugged in. Um, it should be symmetric. If it isn't, there's something kind of messed up about your computer. Um, but this way it can tell like if it's plugged upright or, or down ways. Like I said, 99.99% .99 of the time, your computer or host device will connect both together. Um, and you can also disconnect the CC1 pin if you want this as a host USB. So you want to measure the uh, resistance so you can remove the 5.1K. But this, um, you know, what's nice is you can plug it right into a um, USB power delivery and it'll give you five volts and then if you want uh, data pins from a computer or to connect the data pins of a, a client device you're good to go so I think that this kind of covers everything people need for a USB-C plug um, we're trying it out and if this works out we'll make some devices that can plug right into USB-C all right sorry to show tonight episode to you ladies our team our customers and more is da, 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 da. Da, da, da. the hx711 load cell amplifier for load cell strain gauges and other fine wheatstone bridge type devices um we stock a um i squared c version of this kind of sensor not the exact same one called the nau7802 
I kind of prefer it because I like I squared C, but there's a lot of people who are like, well, I want to connect or log them together. Um, we'll show them right in a second. Yeah, they want to collect a bunch together and they want to use uh, two data pins because then you can have as many. You don't have to worry about sharing the bus and the addresses. Um, maybe they already have code for the HX711. I don't know. It was a, a common request, a common request from people. So we need to break out. Uh, this is based on the uh, SparkFun HX711. They made an open source version of uh, Breakout Board and we looked at it and took what we thought was awesome and then added some different stuff that we thought was awesome. So um, what's nice about this breakout is it has um, both the A and B channel exported out on the terminal block. So you can connect to uh, Wheatstone Bridges. You share the E minus and E plus exciter pins, but then you have two different uh, bridges. Uh, the A bridge has 30, I think 64 or 128 gain, and the B bridge has a fixed 32 gain. Um, there is separate power uh, pins for the um, VIO is the uh, interface voltage and VIN is like the excitation voltage. So if you have a quieter supply versus your um, GPIO logic level, you might want to have those separated. Clock and data, it's not SPI. It's SPI-ish, but it's not SPI. Thankfully, the pin runs, the, the chip runs on 3 volt or 5 volt IO, and so you don't need a level shifter because, again, it's like a bidirectional um, system. And uh, then the rate select. So you can select either 80 samples per second or 10 samples per second. So let's go to the overhead. I can show a quick demo. So this is, I've got my ESP32 S2 TFT. Um, I got wired up. What's nice is you only need power and then the two data pins. Then I have a strain gauge. And then even as I pick it up, you know, it starts, to, the value starts changing. So one thing you'll notice is that it's updating really fast because I have it selected for high. Um, if you want more precise, you can set for low. It's only 10 samples per second, but that's still like pretty fast. And then as I twist and bend this, um, it's going to show like the value changing. So like, you know, it's a one kilogram. So as I provide um, enough force to, you know, torque it as much as like a one kilogram weight would, um, you'll see it goes negative if I push and positive if I pull. And that's the A channel. Again, there's a B channel as well, if you like. Um, seems to work pretty well. We've got Arduino and CircuitPython code ready to go. And uh, it's almost fully assembled. You have the terminal block on it. So you just need um, headers or wires if you'd like, and you're ready to um, measure. It's a very popular strain gauge or load cell amplifier. Seems to work quite well. Yay! New, 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 new,